Well, good morning. Several years ago, Bishop Glenda Curry, the Bishop of Alabama, was teaching a group of seven-year-old boys about prayer. She described the scene. They were all gathered more or less quietly in a circle on the floor around me, she said, when I asked them, tell me what you know about prayer. While hands waved in the air, one boy said, prayer is talking to God. Another said, prayer is asking God for the things you need. And I thought, recounted the bishop, that it was going pretty well. But then in the back, a boy with big brown eyes blurted out, it's stupid, it doesn't work. Sounding both experienced and whipped, Glenda paused for a moment and said, wait a minute, Rob, what do you mean it doesn't work? He replied, you know, you can ask God for a skateboard if you want, but you won't get it. And all around the room, little heads nodded in somber agreement. Kids are great, aren't they? You know, they often say out loud, albeit in seven-year-old terminology, what many of us think, but politely keep to ourselves. You see, it's really not that uncommon for us to think about prayer the same way that seven-year-old did that when it comes right down to it, prayer is mostly about asking God for what we want. After all, we know God is all-powerful and we have many needs distributed all along Maslow's hierarchy, from food and shelter to personal growth to relationships. We want people we love to be healed. We want relationships to get better. We want painful difficulties to cease in our lives and those of others. So we screw up our courage and lodge our requests with the Almighty. But if you follow this train of thought, when we don't sometimes get what we've asked for, we're often left wondering why. Did we overstep our bounds or use the wrong words? Are we being denied as punishment for our transgressions, or far worse, is God just ignoring us, indifferent, really, to our needs and desires? Well, I can't help but wonder if some of these questions were running through the disciples' minds when they politely asked, Lord, teach us to pray. But Jesus' response to them and to us puts all those questions to rest. You see, Jesus teaches that while prayer certainly involves asking for things, it is first and foremost grounded in intimate relationship with a holy and loving God. Father, Jesus begins, hallowed is your name. We approach God relationally, not as distant or groveling supplicants, but as beloved children of the Most High. But Jesus goes on to tell his disciples that it is appropriate, even critical, to bring our needs and desires to God in prayer. Give us this day our daily bread, Jesus says. Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and keep knocking, and the door will be opened. The picture Jesus paints is of a God who actually wants to be sought, to be honored and pursued by us, his children, to be asked again and again and again. This God Jesus describes seems to delight in our pestering. Isn't that curious? Perhaps it's because while we so often come to God with a list of wants, what God really wants is us, you and me. God wants that deep inner part of us the Hebrew Bible calls our heart. 
and all that seeking and knocking Jesus encourages us to do, it's not just about getting our requests answered. Even the most sincere and fervent ones know this kind of persistent prayer brings us more fully into relationship with God. Prayer widens our hearts, as St. Augustine put it, to receive more of our Heavenly Father until we will not be satisfied with anything less but God. So if we conclude our prayers aren't working, when things don't go the way we'd hoped, well then, we still really don't understand prayer. As a young adult, I had an experience with prayer that shifted my trajectory of life in Christ. You see, the faith that I had been steeped in as a child was ignited in college into something new and real. And at that time, I determined I would go wherever God asked me to go, I would do whatever God asked me to do. It sounds kind of noble, I guess, but you know, whatever. After graduation, I was confused and frustrated because my life was not unfolding the way I thought it would, or more accurately, the way I thought it should. I still wasn't clear about calling or career, and the doors that did open for me were not the ones I expected. Oh, I had such limited life experience, but nevertheless, I had been trying so hard to do and say everything just right, and nothing seemed to be working. It finally came into focus for me one day when I realized how angry and resentful I had really become toward God. I could no longer pretend otherwise, and I didn't want to. Because honestly, it was clear to me that God was not keeping his end of the deal. This prayer thing was not working. Oh, I dressed it up in nice theological language, but really, I had asked for a shiny new skateboard, and God was not giving it to me. Well, when I finally poured out this anger and frustration in prayer, in those moments, it was as if I heard that still, small voice of the Holy Spirit speaking within me, saying, finally, some honesty. You see, God will work with our honesty. God wasn't punishing me or thwarting my plans. God wasn't failing to keep his end of the deal. Beloved, there was no deal. I'm not sure where I got that idea in the first place. No, God was loving me, guiding me, answering my prayers in the way that was truly best as a loving father cares for a precious child inviting me to be honest about what I really thought, God knew it anyway, but also inviting me to lay down my limited perspective for God's unlimited one. Your kingdom come, Jesus was teaching me to pray. Your will be done, we often add, on earth as in heaven. You see, dear friends, I've come to believe that the best description of prayer is not only asking God for what we want, although that's part of it. Prayer is when our true self meets God's true self in a peculiar mix of affection and boldness, honesty and humility. This kind of prayer changes us from the inside out and binds us to God in love. In a few moments, we will all join together lifting our prayers to God with the prayers of the people. And at the end of those prayers, Canon Elizabeth will conclude with a collect that's simply a prayer written ahead of time and this one is written specifically for this parish church, for our search process for a new rector. Friends, join me in asking and continuing to ask for God's guidance. Let's seek and keep seeking God's 
good and perfect will for us here at Bethesda. Because despite what seven-year-old Rob told Bishop Glenda, prayer does work. It widens our hearts and bids God's kingdom come. Amen.